Good evening. Sorry for the technical difficulties, but this, these things happen. So I'm glad you're here with us this evening. I uh, asked Archdeacon Deborah Kraft if she would say a prayer prior to beginning, which she did, and I thank her for that very much. And uh, I also said prayers last night and today, so I'm coming to you with courage, because it takes courage to do workshops live. <laughs> I ask God for the wisdom and the words. I come to you with respect, love, truth, my truth, and my husband's truth, honesty, and with a very, very humble heart. It's, um, it's awesome to be asked to do a workshop and it's awesome to be able to share what I have learned in my lifetime and my husband has also shared with me and things that we learned together. Uh, he told me with his art it was an escape for him from the trauma of residential school. It helped him forget about his trauma for a period of time. And when I purchased my first original from my husband, which I still have, uh, I asked him what it meant. And he said, it means whatever you want it to mean. And I left thinking, oh gee. <laughs> and Later on, we got together, developed a relationship, and again I asked him, and he explained to me what his thoughts were before he was painting it. He said the biggest part of painting is the thinking prior to the action. So I will also explain that particular painting to you this evening as well. And throughout the years, we did many, many art shows, and uh, I told him, we need to write this down, we need to write down what they mean. And I became the author, and he became the creator. So we worked as a really, really super team, and we taught, we wanted to talk, teach the meanings of the art. It wasn't just a pretty thing. And I want to keep the teachings going on to others. My husband always said to tell anyone who is willing to listen. And if you're here with us this evening, I'm glad that you're here and you're listening. And here I go. Oh, one little thing I forgot to say. It's, uh, it's really awesome being in St. Paul's. Uh, I miss my church. And isn't it really something when, to get in your church, you need to do a workshop. <laughs> oh my goodness. And Lori, bless her heart, Lori Sandham is here. She's the technology person, and she is so awesome. She's got us on, and this whole experience will be uh, posted on St. Paul's website as well when we're done. I wanted to explain a little bit about myself as well. I'm uh, unregistered Métis. My ancestors come from Bad River Reserve in Wisconsin. And my Indian name is Makwagabo Ikwe, meaning bear standing woman. And I'm a member of the Bear Clan and Ojibwe tribe. And uh, everything I like to say or do has a meaning to it. And I will start with explaining my necklace. My necklace is beaded. I have a hair beret as well. It was given to me by an elder in Calgary when we went to, to do a show in Calgary. And uh, 
I honor her all the time when I wear this and I wear it on special occasions and this is a special time. She's in my heart and she gave something to my husband as well and we always remembered her. I wear my ego ring. It was my husband's ring. We had two of them made, one for each of us being strong. I wear the turquoise to remind me of my ancestry. And I wear this ring. It looks all fancy, but my mother gave it to me, so I honor my mother by wearing that. My bracelet is all bear paws, and that's my clan. This is my Fitbit, and that tells me I have to do steps. So it keeps me physically healthy, which is really good. <laughs> so I want to explain Abe's colors, and uh, he has certain colors that he likes to use, and I'm going to use this particular print to explain it. Not all of them, but most of his paintings are surrounded by the color black. And the color black represents the negativity in our world. Represents things that are not so good for us. And it surrounds us every day. We're never going to get rid of it. And the next color is the reddish brown color. And the reddish brown is indicative of our faith. Our faith, what we believe in, no matter what it is, what we believe in will protect us from that negativity outside. The yellow represents acting upon our faith. That's our light that's shining through when we act on our faith, when we are good, kind people. And once you have activated your faith, then there's the white. And the white represents being the best person that you can be. We're all human, we all make mistakes, but we always strive to be the best we can be in life. And the red represents two things. The red color represents the blood of our ancestors, those that paved the way before us, those that went through so much and try as elders to teach us how to do things. And a lot of times when we're young, we might not listen. But as we get older, Yes, we know that those elders were right, and that could have saved us a lot of trouble <laughs> if we had listened sometimes. Red also represents for my husband the blood of Christ, the blood of Christ that protects us from all harm. And every evening I pray at the end of my prayers that the blood of Christ covers us all and protects us all from everything. So those are my husband's colors. Blue, we always, both of us looked at blue as representing honesty. Sometimes we would wear blue when we were speaking to people because we wanted them to know we were being honest. Today I have my blue on. <laughs> so that is my husband's colors. And when I look, you know, I'm, I'm trying this evening to show you about life teachings and at the same time blend the two cultures, First Nations culture and the Christian teachings as well, because they're so parallel to each other. And there's goodness in all. So with the colors, I wanted to quote Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. 
Every time we do a good work in our life, we're glorifying God. Now I will go on to the medicine wheel. And the medicine wheel represents the four colors of man, yellow, white, red, black. And my husband and I decided to put the colors in this order, which is, a lot of people have told us we put them in the wrong order, but we were looking at how the world is, the physical world. And to the north is England and Germany and all on that side. So we put that white and red was Western. Black was South Africa. Yellow was East. That was the Oriental people. There is also four stages of a person. There's baby, youth, adult, and elder. That's another four. There are four seasons, winter, spring, summer, fall. Four elements, fire, water, earth, and air. So, and everything is infinite. There is no beginning, there is no end. I also was, you know, as I was thinking about this workshop, I was looking at Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the white is all three in one. So I, I kind of had that feeling to add that in there as well. So. In First Nations culture, you can do a lot of fours. And I recall my husband teaching this to the students. They came up with a lot of fours. Over, under, beside, and there was another one. Up, down. But there was four of them. I mean, these students were awesome. <laughs> so that's the medicine wheel. And for everything circles as well, the earth and the, the sun and the moon, everything revolves in a circle and it's all infinite. And for the medicine wheel, I was looking at Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8, and I'm not going to read the whole chapters 1 to 8, but to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Everything in life that happens to us, even our little technical difficulties this evening, there's a purpose to it, there's a reason for it, and we need to be calm and patient and allow God's plan to work out. The next I have is creation in harmony. This was a more recent one. My husband changed his style a little bit. And there is a continuous link Everything is linked together here. The sun, the moon, the water, the people, the four-legged animals, the fish, homes, communities, feathers representing the birds, the winged ones, the eagle, the fire. It's all connected. Oh, I think we have a question. Okay, yes, questions are great. Did he have a special verse for himself, or like a favorite verse that he would? He never really had a favorite verse. No. I do have a favorite verse, but I, I never heard Abe to have a favorite one. He just loved all of them. He used to be. My favorite is uh, Be Still and Know That I Am. 
Boy, did that ever teach me a lot. And it took me years to figure it out. <laughs> I just thought I talked too much, but that's not it. It's, uh, it's got something to do with allowing things to happen and just being quiet. And my husband, if people knew him, he was a very quiet man. So he was still. I was the popcorn one. <laughs> so everything is connected. Everything was in harmony. All creation. And somehow things happened. Greed got in the way. Racism got in the way. Things happened that creation is no longer in harmony. And unfortunately we're seeing that as well in Minneapolis today. And uh, we need to get back to this. God said uh, in Revelation 22 and 13, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And we need to get back to our belief system can be Creator God to, in order to get back to to this harmony in life. And I look at Isaiah 65 and 25, and it says, The wolf and lamb shall graze together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And with this one, I say the, the wolf and the deer will lie together. So I was a little bit off there, but that's how we need to be. And that's how it will be in the end. Genesis 2.15 also says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. This is the way it was. We tended, we kept things. We didn't have to kill and, and rummage and pollute and things like that. And that's what we need to, you know, that's what we were put on earth for, is to tend it. And uh, we all, most of us, I guess, know that when you're outside and when you're digging in the dirt and when you're in the trees and nature, we feel so good. And we need to really respect that for all time. The world was created in peace and harmony. We are all connected and there was respect for all living things. Everything was equal to one another and we need to know that we are all equal no matter what our position in life is. We are all equal to one another. Now the next one I'm going to show is called the healing drum and the healing drum is Abe's family history part of his family history and he wanted to show how First Nations knew things prior to even learning about the Bible and Christianity. And this particular painting, this is Abe's grandfather, George, and this is in Sandy Lake. This is Abe's father, Danius, and his grandmother, I forget her name, sorry. But in Sandy Lake, years and years ago, when Abe's father was just a teenager, there was no food to be had. He went hunting and there wasn't anything. People were literally starving in Sandy and the surrounding areas. They were dying. Abe's grandfather was a medicine man, a shaman. He prayed. He prayed to Creator to help the communities. 
and he told, he got word, and he told Dave's dad to go back out again. So his father went back out again with his friend, and out of nowhere, they found 17 caribou. They got all of them. They brought them home, and the grandfather asked that he have the largest caribou they caught, which he was given. His grandmother tanned the hide, and his grandfather made this drum. Any time there was any badness he could feel coming to the community, he would go into the bush and he would play that drum and pray at the same time. Very humble too. He didn't do it in front of anybody. He did it outside and away from everyone. He would come back and he would tell what to do. He would be given word from the Creator how to protect the community. And he would tell the community what to do, and they did it. So, long, long time ago, God was answering First Nations people's prayers. And I just find that so awesome. This drum is now in Sandy Lake. The elders requested the sacred articles to go back, and it's back home in Sandy Lake now. And uh, it's just the power of prayer, and at the same time, how Abe always said, you know, my people knew. I don't know how they knew, but they knew. They knew to pray. They may not have had the exact same words. Same with uh, when Christ was born. We have that painting here in the church. They knew something very special was happening that night. So with this painting, I looked at Psalm 149.3. Let them praise his name with the dance. Let them sing praises to him with the timbre and harp. The timbre in the old, old times could have been a tambourine which had a little hand drum. And so somehow, again, they knew. Our people knew. And there is uh, such a thing up north called Longhouse, and Longhouse, you would get together and they would drum and they would dance in a circle to honor and give thanks for berries in the summer, for harvesting the animals and the birds in the fall, for everything. So there was a great gratitude that came with these longhouses and they knew to thank the Creator, which we need to do as well. We need to thank Creator God for everything in our lives. I thank Him every morning before my feet hit the floor. I thank God the Creator for every new day I have, for every breath I take. Gratitude is it makes you feel so good just to say thank you. And this was all praise and worship. Now we will go to a live game. And a live game, I'm sorry I keep referring to my iPad because I can't memorize everything. Uh, I look at Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And alive again will give us hope. No matter how terrible things look, like this tree looks dead, Sometimes we even have plants that look like they're dead. But when you look at things, when you 
start to pray. When you maybe talk to somebody, there is hope. You may have to go to your past. You may have to go back to where you were as a child. And you will become fruitful again. You will become full again. You will be productive and probably even better than you ever were in your life. So never, never give up. Because our Lord has a lot to offer. And we don't know what's around the corner. Uh, last year, I was giving up all hope. I was going in the hospital with heart failure every month. I took a second major heart attack. And my cousin was there, and I said, I just want to go. There's nothing here. I just want to go. My heart stopped on the operating table. I actually did see Jesus. He held my hand and he started my heart again without any physicians having to do anything. That was my miracle. And I began to think, there's a plan here. He wants me to do something. And so I continued teaching. And here I am today. So there is hope. God provides me with everything I need. My creator has not given up on me in a pandemic. I don't have to weary. I have all my needs met. So don't ever think anything is hopeless. Always know that something good will happen. And you know, the other part of it is my husband had a serious disease and he did die from it. But even before his death, he had hope that he would be flying to heaven. And he created this piece for his mother who had cancer. And it's in the Sulakot hospital where she was. So always know that there is hope. Always put your trust in the Creator God. Next one. Oops, I'm out of order. Oops, no, I'm not. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, God. I'm just ordinary human being here. <laughs> being human. Okay, this is, next one is called Creating Balance. Now, if there are any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. This one is called Creating Balance. And... I quoted Proverbs 11.1 1 here. Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. So, when we look at life itself, we see the moon and the sun. We see hot and cold. We see love and hate. We see so many different things, but we need to experience the opposite of love, to appreciate love. Today, I am really appreciative of the cool because I'm so hot in here today. So I need to have these opposites in order to maintain my life. I'm not going to become wise if I don't make any mistakes in my life. I will never learn. If everything was great and wonderful, we would not be grateful for things. We would not appreciate things. We need to have that experience in our lives 
in order to create the balance. We can be funny sometimes. It's the same as the, there's a time for every season. You know, winter comes, it's cold. Summer comes, it's hot. We need to have all of them. Yes, I, there is a question here. Um, do you still sell these originals? Originals? Um, I have a few originals at home. I've given most of them to the family now. But I do have some. If anybody's kind of interested, I don't know. I'd have to. I have prints, and we'll talk about that later. I have prints. I'm pretty connected to the originals. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they have meaning for me, you know. Um, so there's male and female as well, you know. This one's got the little seeds inside, and this is female and male. And we need that as well. We need to have different thought processes. We all think this differently as males and females. We all act differently. So we need to have that in our lives. So we understand each other. So any questions on balance? I hope I'm explaining that properly. But don't and don't fret if you ever make a mistake. Don't fret if you uh, have something terrible happen. I mean, my life almost ended when my husband passed. But I've learned so much from him even in his passing that I'm just in awe. And... and Everything is good. Of course, we'd love to have him here, but I've learned lots. The next one is power to choose. And this is talking about free will. Oops, there we go. And I looked at Galatians 5 and 13. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. So this is the actual original that I purchased off Abe when I first met him and asked, what does it mean? And this is the one that he said, whatever you want it to mean. <laughs> After... I find that, you know, I need to know. And we have choices in life. God, the Creator, has given us a free will to be who we are. We can choose a fruitful life, a good life, and that good life will give us good roots. We'll be solid as individuals. Or we can choose the flesh. We can choose things that are not good for us and we will not be fruitful. Our roots will not be strong and we will be weak. So God gave us the power to choose the kind of life that we want to live. We can have a happy, joyful life, we can have a peaceful life, or we can have a life that's full of anger and disappointment and frustrations. It's up to us. And the Creator God gave us that to choose for ourselves, which was awesome. He could have said, no, you have to do what I say. But He's an awesome God, and He's allowing us to choose. And um, I just... Everyone just loves this print as well. Oops. Sorry about that. <laughs> Next one is gifts from the Creator. And I quote 1 Peter 4 and 10. As each one has received a gift, Minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Abe 
loved eagles. Eagles was, they were his specialty. And he would always show eagles coming from heaven to give gifts. And I pondered on that. And I believe the eagle is representing Jesus. Jesus giving us gifts. And the Holy Spirit giving us gifts. And it could be anything. A gift is a blessing. And a lot of times people want to gift us things and we tell them, oh, no, I can't, you know, I can't take it. Or you take it and you don't feel good about it or whatever. When you do that, or if you even refuse a gift, you're refusing that person's blessing. When I give something to you, I get blessed for doing that. When I receive a gift from you, I am getting blessed from you through the Creator speaking to you to give to me. So, a lot of times we're taught to give, but we're not taught to receive. And this is how, I, I explained this to my neighbor the other day too, because she didn't want to take something from me. And she understood after that. I have to be able to receive in order for, again, that to go around in the circle, give and receive. It's not just give. Give drops. Give and receive. Creator God has blessed me with so much over this past year and a half. I can't believe it. I was worried about paying my car payments. The money was there. I was worried about car insurance. I didn't know how to deal with myself because I've never been alone in my life. And God provided for the insurance. God provided for my health that I paid for. Unbelievable what I received. So because of that, again we go back to the colors, I want my light to shine. I want God's light to shine through me. So I, I am giving to people as well. And today I'm giving you a workshop and I'm just so happy about it. <laughs> so that's that one. Now, this one, I hope it doesn't glare. This one is called Grounded in Love. And a little story on this one, when Abe asked me to marry him and I was planning the wedding, I said, I need invitations. So I need you to make a design for me for invitations because invitations are really expensive. <laughs> and he designed this. And later when we printed it, we printed it in red. This is the original that he actually painted. And I look at uh, 1 Corinthians 13 and 13. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. As a couple, when you pray in agreement with one another, you will have a solid foundation to build your life your home, and your family on. There will be peace, faith, hope, and love in your home, as well as in your children. The children will see the love of God <clears throat> and each other in their parents and reflect that in their older years. So when you see your parents pray together, when you see them together loving each other, being kind to each other, this is what you're going to have in your home. And you're going to have these roots show how solid that is.
that's a very solid relationship. So you need to be in agreement with one another in many things. Some things, yes, you're not going to agree on, and that's just life. <laughs> but the main thing is you agree to have that faith in the Creator, in God, <clears throat> excuse me, to help you through your relationship and with your family. Oops. Any questions? I'm still waiting for questions. <laughs> This one is called Eagle Flight. And as I stated before, I believe the eagle to represent Christ who watches over us constantly and sees... Oh no, this... I'm sorry, I got it wrong. Thanks again. <laughs> Praying together. Matthew eighteen twenty. For where two or three are gathered together in my name... I am there in the midst of them. This, again, is another couple. This is a female because you can see the little seat. And this is a male just because we have his face. But they are praying together, again, in agreement. And because they are there, just like Abe's grandfather prayed, the prayers are answered. I don't know what everybody prays for, but when you have someone else praying with you, it could be any relationship, friends, could be you as a couple, it could be even children. Praying together, you will receive great gifts from God. And you need to be patient. I found I prayed lots. I prayed so badly that my husband would be cured. You have no idea how I prayed. That wasn't in the plan. That was not in the master plan. And his work was done. What he had to do was done here. And... I accepted that after a while. It was hard, but I did accept it, and I did have to let him go. Now I pray, I'm all by myself. There's not two or more of us, but I believe that he's there as well. So it's all good. Now we're gonna go to Eagle Flight. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Again, probably the third time now, I believe the eagle is representative of Christ in my husband's heart anyway. And uh, I look at Isaiah 40 and 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. And this shows a very strong eagle, this one for sure. And the eagle flies the closest to heaven. That's why they believe that the eagle brings our prayers to Creator God. For me, the way I was taught, I can pray to Father God in heaven. At the end of every prayer, I say, in Jesus' name. And this actually kind of represents Jesus bringing those prayers to his Father for me. So it has a lot of great value to see the insight my husband had as well. Why he was so interested in eagles. 
and uh, it has been determined by scientists that eagle feathers actually do scientifically proven carry positive ions within the feathers because of their closeness to the sun. So that was pretty awesome when a scientist says that. Now, the next one I'm going to show you is called Freedom. Any questions on the other? No? Okay. Freedom, I look at Psalm 119 and 45. For I will work in liberty, for I seek your precepts. Living according to God's guidance and rules, you will attain freedom in this life and the hereafter. So, when we are praying for things to get better in our lives, <clears throat> excuse me, when we are living a good life, we may need to, you know, there may be a lot of trauma. This was created as a logo for a residential school survivor workshop, Christian workshop for healing that my husband and his brother Max and his friend Joey Gilbert, Pastor Joey Gilbert, they put on here in Thunder Bay. And um, this represents your healing when you deal with your situations, when you pray, when you seek counsel from elders or counselors or whoever you believe to be a wise person that will help you, you can become free from the bonds of the past. And I looked at this after that workshop and I said to my husband, I said, do you see what I see in there? And he asked me, what did you see? And I said, the fire of the Holy Spirit, Christ, and the Godhead, God the Father. I said, I see the Trinity in here. And my husband hadn't seen it yet. And he's like, wow. He was so advanced, he didn't even know he created the Trinity in his artwork. And it was just awesome. I was so, so happy. And it's been so popular with people are just drawn to it. And I think it's because it, it does have that essence of being free and just being a happy person. Oh, we have a question. If someone sees a hand holding a person in this country, yes. rather than flames, it looks like a hand. Yes, it does look like the hand of God. Yeah, it looks like the hand of God, and it is an actual flame too. So it's, it's just awesome. Very clean and simple. He wasn't complicated with his artwork, as some people are. But he, uh, he was plain and simple. He used to tell me, he said, I'm plain and simple with a little bit of fancy. I didn't know if I was a little bit of fancy. <laughs> uh, and this, this is an original and it is the last painting my husband ever did. I've had it in my living room and I have been sitting with it for a year and a half and looking at it every single day. What were you trying to tell me? And I finally got it. I actually entitled this because he did not title this he created this in August or September, the year 
before he passed, four months before he passed. We went to Sioux Lookout. We were asked to do a workshop. I taught legends and how to create legends, stories, storytelling, I guess. And my husband was asked to teach art. And I said, are you sure you want to do this? And he said, yes. This is what he created during that workshop. So I call it the last stand. And I look at Psalm 100, verse 2. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence and singing. This to me is my husband, his last days. Finally got to the top of the mountain. Finally got to the top of the mountain. My husband always sang. He sang gospel. He was a beautiful singer. This wolf is singing. This is the last stand. There is no leaves on the trees. There's snow falling. My husband passed in January 2019. This was painted in August, the end of August 2018. That's the snow. As you saw in other pictures, there's always red in here, there's always a little picture inside the animal. There's no picture in this animal. To me, the work is done. He's now become the ancestor. Here as well, there is no bright colors, no red, no yellows, but a lot of little dots, and the little dots always represented seeds, which would be your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, which we have many, many of. I don't personally have children. They're all apes. We lost a child, but this is the seeds from him the generations that he produced during his lifetime. So we see the children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren that he's left behind to grow. You see, he used to plant seeds in the ground. Then I looked at this and I'm like, that looks like a tunnel. From far away, that looks like a tunnel. And from all accounts that I have ever heard of, people always see this light at the end of a tunnel when they're passing through. And I believe this was his journey to heaven. This is what he wanted to accomplish in his lifetime. This is what he accomplished. All the works that he did in his lifetime. That's his reward. And I'm very happy that he has the reward. But so insightful, this, this painting. And, and I can rejoice, I can be happy, because he actually saw that and painted it. So that's just awesome for me. And I'm concluding with this. Remember the colors that we started off with. The colors we started off with in white. White is what we are achieving. We're trying so hard in our life to become the best we can be, to be the purest we can be. And I believe my husband achieved that. I believe that he is with the Lord and that he is watching over all of us. And sometimes I get visits, which is really nice too. And to conclude, 
I hope that explains some of life, how we need to live a good life. And I hope you can live in peace and harmony and respect and kindness, have compassion and empathy and forgiveness in your heart, all those good things, so that you can be blessed with peace and love and joy. The peace and love and joy of God. And I also have to say, you know, this is all serious stuff, but we need humor. If you know First Nations people at all, you know there's lots and lots of humor. And things can be really seriously talked about, and at the same time, those elders are laughing away like crazy. So they know balancing, we need to balance it with humor. So this is something that my husband often painted and put up in his art shows. And I would say, what in heaven's name is that? And whatever city we were in, take for example Thunder Bay, he would say, this is called Snowstorm in Thunder Bay. <laughs> so we have to remember to laugh people, enjoy life. And I, I, time right now is so very, very precious to everybody. And I have to say, you know, so peachy me, which big, big thank you for listening in because your time is so precious and I have taken it up. Oh, we have a question. What color uh, of the indigenous paintings um, resonates with you most? Yellow. The yellow Because it's God's light shining from you. It's being a good, kind person. And I'm sorry I'm getting emotional, but I've, I'm striving so hard for that. And I will never forget y'all. Do I wear it? Not really. But <laughs> I love yellow. <laughs> I appreciate that question. Yes, another question? Yeah. Um, are age work done in acrylics? What does he use? What medium? Yes, he always used acrylics on arches paper or canvas. Always used acrylics. The person with the question commented that his work is very beautiful. It is. I mean, I, I can't, I can say his work was awesome. It's the best work I have ever seen. And it's not because he was my husband. It's because he was good. That was a gift and a blessing that he got from God that he shared with people. And a lot of people, again, it's a pretty picture, but they didn't get the idea. And I want to make sure that all these teachings, like sometimes, huh? Oh, put something here? Okay. Huh? Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, um, it's not because I worked really, really hard promoting his work. We worked as a team and we worked hard at what we did, but it was mostly because of the messages. We wanted to teach, and I don't want to let that go. If you see me out with artwork trying to sell some things, I'm also teaching at the same time. I'm always teaching. And I wrote a book that's got a lot of his artwork in there and the stories that I created as well for the stories. Beautiful legacy to his children and to his work. 
and his yes question. Uh, Someone named Ernie. Neglect for sharing it, but I'm so grateful to have been there in the suit when he painted it. Oh, thanks, Ernie. I don't remember, but like, cool. I'm so happy you were there when you see, and now you know what it means too. It took me a while to figure it out. But when you really look closely at things, you will get a message. There's always a message in everything, everywhere, even in the trees and the animals. We need to respect all that, eh? So a woman named Catherine says, thank you for sharing. It's very interesting about that. Oh, God bless you, Catherine. I think I know she comes from my hometown of Scriber. <laughs> if that's the same Catherine. That's awesome. And, uh, oh yes, I was going to say that um, because the church has been so kind to ask for me to do a workshop, and this is what I chose to do, Anyone who's interested in purchasing any of the prints, if I have them available, which I have lots available, or if you want to look at an original, I have a couple I might be willing to let go, or books, you can call me at 708-1352 area code 807 and with that being said 30 percent of anything i sell i am giving to saint paul's church this is a very rough time in the pandemics and uh, i want to give back to the church too the church gave to me so anyone wanting to purchase i will give 30 percent of my sales to saint paul Thank you so much for sharing your oops, another question. Catherine says that to her yellow is happiness. Yellow is ha yeah, of course. It's just joyful, you know. When you when you get to be that kind of person that acts on their faith and is is an ambassador for Christ, you feel great joy in your heart, eh? It's true. So yes, it is happiness. It goes beyond happy. Catherine, Abe always said, happy lasts a little while, but joy is forever. Remember that, too. Yes, another question. One last one here, and then we'll let you go. Uh, well done, Abe, that's what Anne says. Oh. About Abe's work, and it brings so much meaning to life. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And we'll be able to post this on Facebook for everyone that maybe didn't get to see it. And, uh, you did. Hmm? You did. Oh, YouTube. It'll be on YouTube. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow. <laughs> Sweating away here. <laughs> but again, thank you. I appreciate you being here, watching, and I, I truly hope that you found something in what I was saying and what Abe was trying to sing through his art. Thank you, Miigwech. Good night. God bless you all. <laughs>